Today we're going to talk about database features in IntelliJ-based IDEs. Uh, all features I'm going to show you are applicable for other IDEs from JetBrains, like IntelliJ IDEA, PyCharm, PHP Storm, RubyMine, and upcoming Rider and Goglands. There are no database features in CLAN and WebStorm. But we shall look on DataGrip, which is just a standalone ID for SQL and databases from JetBrains. I have only one data source, as you can see, which is on Postgres, but nearly everything I'm going to show you is available for other supported databases. When you create a data source, you see which particular databases we support. It's SQLite, MySQL, DB2, Derby, H2, HSQL, Oracle, Postgres, LSQL Server, and Sybase. From the latest version, which is going to be released in July, we shall add the support for Amazon Redshift and Microsoft Asia. This is our data source. As you can see, it's quite common database tree where you can see tables, views, materialized views, routines, and actually there are function and stored procedures, operators, and some other objects of your database. Here in this tree, you can choose which particular schemas you want to see in this tree. In the current version of data group, we cannot support several databases for Postgres, but this feature will be added in the new version. So let's create the simple query to some simple table in our Sakila database, which is quite common test database among the community. To create a query, we should create a query console. There is no shortcut for this action, but you can always assign it to this. This is query console. And we can create a simple query. This is the simplest query, and it's going to be run. But now we see the error. It means that here in search path, we didn't set the appropriate database. Once you set it, the query can be run. But the first thing you need to know that to create some simple snippets of code, you can use so-called live templates. Live templates is just code snippets which are stored in the IDE. But also, you can create your own ones. If you press Command J or Ctrl G on Linux and Windows, you can see the list of live templates. There are several of them for SQL. Each live template consists of the abbreviation and a name. You can choose the needed one and press Enter. What you can also do, you can just type this abbreviation in our case, it's SEL, and then press Tab. As you can see here, code completion offers you tables you can write the query to. In our case, it's actor. Code completion is not always automatic. Sometimes you need to invoke it by control space. Here, it offers an alias. Let's create a little bit more complicated query and write some join. Here, as you can see, code completion offers us a table film actor, which is actually a referencing table. It's in the first place just because I rehearsed this talk before and code completion remembers which particular objects I used before. What you can do is, is type just FIAC and it will complete the film actor table. This feature is called abbreviation completion. And abbreviation completion works not only for objects uh, with these kind of names with the underscore, but also if you name your object with the camel case. So if you press enter, you got this table here. After you type on, Code completion just knows about your foreign keys in your database and offers you the completion of the clause. This query also works. Let's create a couple of joints more. For this, sometimes it's comfortable to use 
text edit a feature like duplicate line by common D. And you can delete line by common delete. For Windows and Linux, it's, it's Ctrl D and Ctrl Y. So let's create a couple of more joints. Here they will be just film. And as you can see, code completion again offers us the finishing of the clause. CA goes for film category, as I described before. So our query is finished and it's working. You can rename an alias if you don't like it. If you press Shift F6, as you can see, your alias will be renamed through the entire script. You can also rename the database objects like commons, columns, or table. If you press Shift F6, there will be a window where renaming the script will be generated, but we shall not perform it now. As you probably know, using wildcards is not the best practice. So what you can do is expanding column lists. For doing this, please press Alt Enter. In general, Alt Enter helps you to improve your code so you can try pressing it in every place and see what ID can offer you for improving. Here, there is a menu where we should choose expand column lists. As you can see, if there are conflicts in the names of the columns, these columns are qualified with the name of the table. Let's delete many columns just to make our query a little bit more neat. It still works and it's good. Then let me show you how to create a query with subquery. If you select the whole query by command A, you can press Alt Command C, which is surround with action. Here, there are several options to surround your query. We shall choose the second one, which is fun expression. Fun means that the caret will be placed before the round brackets. So we created a query with a subquery. Our subquery is yellow, which means that something is wrong in our code. ID tells us that each derived table should have an alias. Alt Enter will help us again here. We can introduce one. Our code is not so neat and we can format it according to the code style. For this, please press Alt Command L. By the way, here you can also expand the wildcard if you need. Let's create another query, which, which will be simple again, to the same table, but with the where clause. Note that OB goes for order by. When you press Command Enter, the ID will offer you which particular query you want to run. It can be this query or the whole script. If you press Command Enter in the subquery, ID will also offer you how many queries you want to run. It can be the subquery, the outer query, or the whole script. Another way to run the subquery is to select this query and run it. If you select some part of the code, it is directly sent to the database. As many of you may probably know, the good way to select code in IntelliJ-based IDEs is to use smart code selection. On Mac, you should press Alt Up or Alt Down. On Windows or Linux, it's Ctrl W or Shift Ctrl W. So based on the syntax, this action will select your code. Here, we wait until the whole subquery will be selected. Once it's selected, we press Command Enter and it's done. To shrink the selection, please press Alt Down. 
here there is a syntax error and semicolon is required. Okay, we make it good. If we run two statements, there are two result sets here. What you can do is to compare them with this button. When you compare two result sets, you see the diff viewer. It shows you which particular rows are presented in the second data set. If the result set is received from one table, it can be editable. I mean, if there are no joins in your query. So for example, here, we can put another name. But let me show you the editing of data on the, on the example of just a table. Here is the data of our table actor. If I press Shift Common F F12, I hide all other windows, so we can concentrate on this particular table. If you click on the column names, the data will be ordered. As I said before, tables are editable. So we can rename this Lola, Lola Brigida to, for example, I don't know, Helen, and mark Nick. Blue color means that these rows are stored locally. So if you want to update, update the data, please press submit to the database or common dancer. And now your data is saved in the database. Here, you can even delete rows or even add ones. If you want to revert your changes, which are stored locally, please select them press revert. If you want to revert everything, just select so and press revert. Here you see the filter criteria field, which means that here you can write an SQL like in where clause. After you press enter, you got the result. There is also a feature called multiple submit. If there are no unique constraints on the field, you can edit several fields at once. What you can also do is to just copy paste. We can copy this data and paste it to the other column. This column, last update, has a timestamp type, and this one has a bar chart type. But if the database lets you this type of conversion, IDE also will let you do this copy-paste thing. But let's revert everything. Another feature about data editor is not so obvious, and for somebody it's even hidden. And this feature is called navigation by foreign keys. For example, here, if we press Command Down, we see the list of the referencing tables. In our case, it's Film Actor. After pressing Enter, we see all films where this guy under 3 ID took part in. If you want to know something more about film under number 87, we again press Command Down and go to the film table. And we see that this film called Bone Dog Ball Ballroom. You can go to the opposite direction with the same feature. Just press Common Down and you can see the list of the referencing tables. We need Film Actor. Now we can see the whole list of the actors who took part in this film. If you want to know more about 30, we go to the actor table, and it's Kevin Pack. 
So we can say that Kevin Peck and Kevin Chase met once at the filming location. Let's go back to our result sets and look at the toolbar. Here, there is an interesting option called Transpose. You can transpose this view if there are many columns, for example. Also, this transpose thing affects the way you can export your data. Here, you can see the list of the extractors. Let's start with the simplest one, which is CSV extractor. After you chose this, you can copy your data in CSV format to file or to clipboard. And it's also mapped to the common C. So if I select the whole result set and press common C or choose copy, this data is copied to the clipboard in CSV format. Now, we want to paste this data to some place. If you want to have just a file for your temporary needs, the good thing in our ID is called scratch files. And for example, I don't know how to create a scratch file, and I always forget the shortcut. But here is the shortcut you need to remember, and I think this is the most important one in the ID, and this shortcut is Shift Command A. It's find action. If anything is possible in IDE, you can find it here if you just know the name of the action. I surely know that there is an action called new scratch file, and I can type it here. There is new scratch buffer, which is a little bit more temporary, but we need scratch file. And we can see a shortcut, which is shift command then. I can just press enter and perform the action. Here, there is a list of languages we are going to use in our scratch file. Since we are going to paste CSV format, we just use plain text. And we paste our data here. But if we transpose the result set, the result of the extracting will be also transposed. Let's look on the other extractors. Here, you can see JSON, XML, HTML extractors. And you can even create your own if you're OK in Groovy Closure. Let's choose JSON one. After you copy your data, you paste it here in JSON format. If you want this JSON to be highlighted, you can do this. Just change the language of the scratch file. Again, if you don't know how to do this, use find action. In this list, you also can type and use the speed search. Your scratch file is highlighted now. These two extractors are really important. These are SQL extractors. You can extract your data as a batch of SQL update statements. Again, something is wrong because this file is JSON file and we can change its language. Now it will be Postgres. If you want to run these queries, you can attach the console to this scratch file. In the newer version, it will be available in context menu, but here I can only use find action. Even more important is you can use SQL inserts extractor. So you copy your data, 
and you get the botch of insert statements. Let's speak a little bit about writing insert statements in data grip. For example, I need to add one. Again, live template ends can help me. As you can see, code completion offers me the column lists. Common P can help me to know the names of the columns. What I want to say about is HIPAA completion, an unusual type to complete your code. If you type just one letter and press Alt slash, the completion will go through all words in all open files in your IDE. If you want to edit this bunch of insert statements, there is a feature called Edit as Table, and it's available from the context menu. Here you can see the temporary table with the values from the batch of insert statements. And for example, I renamed this cabin to max. And as you can see, this value is also updated. Another cool way to edit the batch of the statements is multi-curses. You can place, pre press them, place them by pressing Alt twice and using arrows. For example, I want to add a new column here and definitely a new value. This code is yellow because IDE says that it cannot resolve this column. It actually means that there is no column Oscars in our table actor. But we can create this column just from the script again with Alt Enter. In this window, which is called Modify Table, anything you can do with a table generates the script in the bottom of the screen. We just create a new column. This script can be opened in the editor or just executed in your database. Let's execute it. Now code is not yellow anymore, and we want to ensure that this column is really added to our table. What we can do is common click on this column, and it will be highlighted in our database tree. It's also applicable for any database object, like table or another column. Let's talk a little bit about navigation in data grip. Commando helps you to go to any database object like table, procedure, or view. If you press enter, you see the data of the table. And if you press F4, you see the table in the database tree. Common shift toe lets you go to any file. And common dalto lets you go to any symbol in the ID. Symbol means that if something is indexed by data group, it can be found here. For example, it's just index or constraints or other keys. Here we can see the index called ID exact last name, and it can be found here as well by its abbreviation. If you need to find the code, what you can obviously use is common def. But not everybody, even in JetBrains, knows that there is a code completion here. So once you type, and press common space or control space, you can complete this field with the help of the words from the open file. What you can also do is to find code inside the source code of the other objects. Finding path feature helps us to do this. 
you just need to choose all places in scope and here try to find some source code. For example, secure address table is joined in the source code of three views, customer list, staff list, and sales by store. After you press enter, you are navigated to the source code of the view. Here in table editor, you also can find text by common def. You can filter results or not filter them. Sometimes it happens that there are too many columns in the result set. If you want to find the column, press common F12, which is structure view. And after you type, you can go to any column. That's back to our query console. The last thing I'm going to show you is user parameter. Sometimes if you copy a code from some R language code or from some reporting system, it can be written with use of user parameter. It can be something like this. ID understand this and offers you the window with a field where you put value. You can create your own syntax of the user parameter in preferences or settings. What you should know is the thing you can search here in settings. For example, I type user parameters and I find this place where I can describe my user parameters with the help of regular expressions. Another way to look in settings is to use search everywhere, which is invoked by double shift. Search everywhere means that you can search really anything everywhere in IDE. It can be database object, or it can be an action, or it can be a part of the settings. So I think this is all I wanted to share with you uh, and thank you for your attention. And now I'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay, wonderful. Um, thanks, Maxim, for a great presentation. Uh, well, well um, I, I, I know the database tools really well and I even uh, blogged about them uh, quite a lot. Uh, and uh, even I did know about a couple of things you just showed that, yeah, that was very interesting to know, especially uh, the thing that you can compare the query results with the other queries. So it, it was very nice. And, and again, the, the action that lets you edit your content of your file as a table. I didn't know about that, so it, it looks very, Impressive, oh, thanks. And we do have uh, some questions. Um, let me uh, open, open the list. So first question, um, how we support MS SQL Server? Um, I quickly answered that question already that yes, we do support it, but maybe there's something to comment uh, for you, Maxim, if there's anything special we have in our roadmap about MS SQL Server? Uh, the main thing in our, is in our roadmap is uh, we're going to support the Microsoft Azure, as I said before. Uh, about uh, SQL Server, we support it as it's shown here as well. So you can use GTDS and Microsoft Driver, and even you can use Windows Authentication. What is notable that you can use Windows authentication even from Mac or Linux. The main issue is sometimes it's not easy to connect because you need to turn on TCP IP connections in, on the Microsoft side. But there is a tutorial how to do this. And if anybody has any questions or issues about it, feel free to tweet at us and we can help you with this. 
Yeah, perfect. Um, another question, uh, same question, but in regard to Hive and in pa and in Parla as SQL dialects, are we um, considering them? Do we have them in the roadmap? Uh, I don't think that they will. Be, they will appear in closest future. And by the way, there are really, really many SQL dialects we wish to support, but it's really a hard task. Maybe not everybody knows that even that if your database, the database you want to connect to, has a GDBC driver, you can use data grip with it, but with not full support. The main thing we are thinking about is the possibility to add custom dialects. And I think this this will be the answer. So everybody can add its own dialect. It's something we are thinking about, but it's not available now. Yeah, thanks. Um, another question. Uh, will a uh, version control system functionality be covered in this webinar? Well, uh, when, when I saw the question, I already answered that I don't know, we'll see. So um, it, it wasn't covered, uh, but yeah. Uh, Maxim, would you like to comment on that? The support uh, for Git? Uh, SVN and other version control system? Uh, there is no support for VCS out of the box, but there is a support for VCS if you install the JetBrains plugin. You go to plugins, and here you can find Git integration or plugin for other VCS system, and you can just install it and use from the IDE. We know that not many people know about this possibility and I'm going to write some blog posts where I can share some simple examples about you using VCS with data grid, but it's possible. Okay, um, next question. Um, do we plan to add more uh, management tools like managing users, permissions, etc.? Yeah, that's quite a common question and we are thinking about it, but frankly speaking, our main audience now are developers. So only when we provide really, really great features for them, for, for those who write SQL, we shall think about administration features. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so the answer is uh, probably not in the nearest future, but well, actually. Yeah, there, there are several, yeah. several requests in our issue tracker. So if anybody wants something, we welcome them to share their thoughts in our issue tracker. We need to understand if it's really important for somebody. But yeah. they will not appear in closest future, and I think this year, for example. Yeah, understood. Um, next question, um, I'll, I'll simply read it. Is there a way to share data sources from data grip in other IDEs to get code completion and, and so on? So as far as I understood the question, um, see we have data grip and we've configured a data source there. Is there a way to reuse this configuration of the data source in the other running IDEs? Yeah, there is a way. So if you have many data sources, but I have only one, but if you have many, it doesn't matter. You can select all of them, go to database tools, and then copy settings. And your in your either ID, for example, PHP Storm or IntelliJ ID, or I don't know, another data grip, you can create a data source from the clipboard. And it'll be it'll be available in the new in new version here. There will be a, a menu from clipboard, and these settings we will place it as a new data source. And now in this version, you can do yeah, yeah. But you can uh, uh, you can also paste them. But now you can just copy them via XML, as you can see. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't work now. But in new version, in 2001.2, 2017.2, there will be an option to create a data source just from the clipboard here. So it, it will be available. Uh, I see. Uh, thanks. I think it does answer it. Uh, when, when I read the question, what I understood is that, um, well, uh, for example, uh, have data sources configured in data grip and have them automatically shared with the other IDs. But this sounds as as, as, as maybe something which, which we don't have right now. But anyway, 
uh, there is a workaround which you can use right now. And for further suggestions, yes, please, please use our issue tracker. I think that's interesting question anyway. And um, yeah, um, there are a couple of questions about whether we're gonna publish the recording. Yes, we'll, we'll publish it. And is there a way to see or edit column descriptions of table columns? Yeah, you uh, you mean if there are table, uh, there are comments on columns. Yeah. Uh, you cannot see them here, but and this is the thing we're gonna add because it's it it, it makes sense that one can see them here. But if you press Command F6 on the column, you can see the column description, and here is the comment. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, Perfect. Wait, I see. Uh, so there's a way, and there are some plans to make it even better. Um, we move on. Another, not a question, but rather a comment or a piece of feedback. Um, I'll just read it so the data group team uh, hear it. Please, can you pass on a comment to the developers of data group? A timer is urgently needed in the status bar. The overall execution time has been added in recent update. However, a ticking second stopwatch is what little really needed. There's been an issue in new track about this for a long time. More recently, I tend to use PHG admin and other tools more often because of that. So uh, first of all, thanks for feedback. And yeah, we'll pass it uh, certainly to the team. So. I really hope we'll address it. Yeah, thank you for the feedback. Uh, some time ago, we added this result here, so you can see how long does it take to, to run the query. And now we are thinking about some kind of notifications for big queries, because it's, it's, it often happens that one runs the big query and switch to the other window and we are thinking about some kind of notification from the id that this that this query is finished but now you can go here and see in this panel that there is two seconds 29 milliseconds for this query okay thank you um Um, there's a, a again comment a quick intro working with SQL files would be nice, but I think we've covered that uh, quite a lot. Um, can we customize the shortcuts, Maxim? Yeah, surely. Like surely, yes, yeah, yeah, surely. You can go to key map and use one, which is stored, and there are several of them, and you can create your own. Okay, um, when you execute a query, the timer should start, stay visible and tick every second until the query can be completes. Then the overall time should display as it goes now. I, I think, yes, we, we, we've just covered that, right? Yeah, I got it, I got it, thank you. Oh, perfect. Um, are there any plans to add some type uh, user management support much like um, Heidi uh, Sickle, uh, we've already commented on that. There is no um, newest plans about that, but we do listen to what people say in our issue tracker. So each each time you comment on that or simply wait uh, for the for the feature request, we do see it and 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 I, I think it is important for us to know. Okay. Uh, um, there is a question uh, which I find very interesting. What what is the pur uh, what is the purpose of Data Grip, uh, given that there's uh, the IntelliJ IDEA platform and other IDs like IntelliJ, like PyCharm, and so on? So, Maxim, so, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, it really depends on you. Somebody is just to fight with 
are the ID and database plugin in them. Others say that we really use data group along with ID IDs because it provides better user experience, we can say that. So it really depends on your needs and what you like. Someone likes the dedicated IDs for, the, for different technologies. So there are no features which are available in data group and not available in other IDs. So it just depends on, on your taste. But we often hear that that ID helps people to understand what, what, what actually happens. And I think uh, nearly 25 or 30 percent of people who use IntelliJ IDEA, they use database plugin, and about five or maybe seven percent of them use data group as well. Yeah, um, I can tell for myself um, what I find uh, cool about data group is that it doesn't have anything extra. When, when you need just to work with queries and with data, um, for me, it, it is important that the user interface is not overall with uh, many uh, non-database relevant um, actions, menu items, and so on. So you can really focus. And um, from my perspective, uh, Toolbox app uh, is really helpful here because if, if, if you do have a license for uh, not just IntelliJ or any other ID, but uh, for several IDs, uh, it, it's very uh, yeah easy to switch between IDs and, and your project. And this is where Data Group adds its value. Okay, I think we can move on. And next question is whether Data Group supports connecting to Google Cloud. Um, I, uh, Maxim, would you like to comment on that, or I, I can, uh, as, as far uh, as as far as I know, uh, given that you you have a URL for the database connection, you'll you'll be able to connect to it. But the question is whether there more dedicated support is needed. I'm 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 not that expert at uh, with Google Cloud for sure. But Maxim, if you could comment on that. Yeah, there is no dedicated support. And and by the way, we didn't test it with Google Cloud. But if it has a GDBC driver, it it cannot be connected to. Um, I I would add to that uh, that I, I I still find the question very interesting and. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Uh, just uh, just recently, Google uh, came up with their own plugin for Google Cloud. Uh, we haven't announced it yet, but it, 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 it's already available for quite some time. And maybe it, it, it would be a good idea to extend this uh, plugin with some additional features, especially for Data Grip and the database plugin for IntelliJ ID and the others. Uh, as soon as you have your account configured uh, with a, with this Google Cloud plugin, I think we could help to connect to the database because we will be able to actually fetch the connection settings. But good question. We'll take a look and see what we can do. Okay. Next question. Can you please share a link? Share a page link with these shortcuts you've uh, demonstrated. I think we can include it into the follow-up email. Yeah, there is a key map uh, of the data group on our website, so you can go to the features uh, link there, and there is a key map. So if you if you don't manage to find them, just tweet at us, and I'll help you. Yeah. Okay. Um, a good question. Uh, it pops up every time uh, we have any Q and A session. Is there any plan to support NoSQL databases? I cannot say we have such plans because it's a huge task, and we we are thinking about it definitely. And there are many people in our issue tracker or we meet at conferences who ask this. But frankly speaking, it requires resources. So. We are thinking about it, but not in closest future as well. Yeah. Um, um, another question. Do you provide detection of portability issues in SQL queries in order to ensure cross-database executability? executability? Well, uh, I personally not sure I understand the question. Maxim, would you like to comment on that? So 
we understand which particular dialect you, you are using now. So as I understood, uh, we are asked about compatibility with other database. So you can just change la language of the file and understand if this query can be run on the other database. Yep. Uh, is there any plan to implement some kind of soup, some kind of version control for databases? Uh, as far as I understand the question, um, it, it is about a kind of version control level on the on inside the database, so you can roll back your changes to the data. Uh, sounds very cool. I don't think we have such plans, and this is this sounds quite as is quite is quite a challenge to me. But uh, the fact is, the fact is, we have such plans. We are thinking about it. We talked about it. So we have such plans. I cannot promise anything, but we discussed this, and there are a couple of ideas about this. So thank you for this question. Yeah, uh, stay tuned. <laughs> Maybe we'll come up with something like that. Um, um, well, uh, another question. When formatting queries, the formatter does not work when copying queries in the console where a CTE starts on the same line where the previous CTE and end. Uh, and there's also an example. Um, I think it's better to report this issue uh, to our tracker because uh, it, it is. It is. It sounds like uh, an issue, uh, and yeah, would be great to have it reported so we can discuss the details, try to reproduce it, and and see if we can fix that. Yeah, I want to add that several things can be configured in settings here in editor code style SQL, and there are really huge list of things you can adjust to yourself. But if there is no option for this, please write us. Yep. Um, next question. Is it possible to record DDL and DML actions so I can modify table and create modification script to be uh, to run on another database? Uh, I find this question really interesting, and uh, I thought about something like that myself. So if I come, uh, maybe elaborate a little bit, uh, I'd like to manage my tables and data, but not on against real data, but just in order to get uh, SQL query, SQL. Uh, statements file to run it against another data, maybe at some other time. Yeah, thank you. We are thinking about logging queries, queries which are run just from data grip, and but we, now we can offer just this, as I uh, showed before. So when you change something in your table, I don't know, add some key or edit the column, there is a script generated here. So perhaps it can be useful for this type of task, I don't know. So if you rename this, you get this script and you can just open it in the editor and run uh, on some other database. Yep, um, is there anything like that for editing data in, in tables or in scripts? And no, no, we we have we have uh, we have this feature now, but there is a request in issue track, and we're thinking about it because when you modify your data, there is a script which is submitted to the database. But now we cannot show it, and we cannot let to store and to copy it to other place. But it yeah. it makes sense definitely. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, okay. Um, I'll next question is quite long. I'll simply read it. Comma and top delimited files can be problematic as those characters often occur in data strings. Have you considered creation of files using character of user's choice? I believe yeah, sure. it. Yeah, uh, Maxim, would you? Yeah, close? here you can. You as you can see, you you can configure CSV formats. Uh, 
and you can create your own format with your own value separator and everything other which can be configured. So just create your own extractor, like I don't know, own extractor. Place here something like I don't know A, and you you will have your own one here, and just use it. Okay. Um, another question: What about sharing scratch files across the team? Um, well, uh, right now you can do that, I believe, uh, by um, uh, Maxim. If you could show the where the scratch files, um, yeah, allocated, and maybe if if there is any chance to have Git support. Uh, working for this folder scratch files like the main thing about scratch file that it's not under your project you can just create a file and put it under the vcs so here are scratches which i created and i even find text in them we are finding parts or something and go to recent files and scratches are here but if you need something to be placed under vcs you can you can just create a file it will work Anyway. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, and another question: Is there a way to load a CSV file into a table? Yeah, definitely, there is a way, and there are, and there are a couple of ways. So the most simple way is to just use context menu and use import data from file. So I don't know if I have one. Yeah. And you can even import the CSV, which is in zip. Uh, I'll try to do this. Yeah, it, it works, but it is just a zip. But what you can also do is you, you can you can just drag and drop this file to to data source. Like, let's try it. Uh, here here is my CSV, and I can put it here, and it will also be imported. So here you have a preview of your data. You can configure everything you want. And like I don't know, let's make it new. And press OK. Okay. Um, moving on. I think it's in, um, in another schema now, but anyway, it, it works because I, I drag and drop it to to the whole database. I see. There's a comment. Uh, um, referring to some part of the webinar or our previous discussion uh, I'll, I'll again read it uh, detecting if code i write is compatible with oracle postgres mysql etc i believe the question is whether we can detect that wow. the, the the statements are compatible with one of the uh, databases of course, yes, I correctly You can change the language, but if if the question is about simultaneously detecting, like the five dialects, we cannot do this. Yeah. Okay. But if if you if you if you if you have some statement here, for example, and change the language again to I don't know Oracle, it will be highlighted, and if there are errors, they will be highlighted as well here. But it's okay yeah. for every database, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, is there a possibility to better visualize an invalid package for Oracle? Now it's just underlined in the overview and I cannot see if the body or the spec is invalid. Mm. Vasily, can you answer this question? Because I don't know the answer. It's about visualizing packages and seeing the source code of them. Uh, Maxim, if you just uh, can turn off the second mic because yeah. the yeah. echo. So, um, uh, actually, there is a if the package is incorrect, it's, it's it's underlined in red. But if you like, like another way to show that the package is, is incorrect, like change font color, just feel free to answer the question, the, your question in question box. Okay. Um, 
if if by any chance we don't answer this particular question now, just follow up in Twitter or in the issue tracker so we can discuss it furtherly. Uh, okay. Um, uh, again, a question about the support for MongoDB, and MongoDB is a NoSQL uh, database, and as far as I know, it's not supported. There is a third-party plugin that, as far as I remember, uh, um, supports some. some uh, there is there is some support, but uh, there is no plugin by JetBrains for that. Um, can we have multiple select queries executed on same tab and showing the output on same screen? Yeah, you can. So if you are, um, like here, there are several queries. Maybe I don't understand uh, the question. But if you have a script, a big script in the file, uh, you also can run it and have the output just in, in one window in the bottom of the screen. Okay. Uh, I think it's quite obvious. So perhaps I didn't understand the question properly. So I asked this guy to tweet at us and yeah, again, yeah. clarify details. Yeah, makes sense. So please uh, follow up and, and so we can discuss it later. Um, okay. Uh, there are a number of simply comments. Any plans for a native Exasol connection? I'm, I, don't, I don't know about Exasol. Maxim or Vasily, uh, could you comment? We have we have an issue now with Tracker, but but there are no closest plans. So please come there and share your thoughts about it, because there are a couple of guys. Actually, we can connect to Excel database and to and work with it using generic introspector, but with simple completion of your SQL. Actually, it works smoothly, and but it's still not native support. But you can feel free to connect to it and see your data. Um, okay, so I'll just sum up. The question is about native support. And um, is there any requ request on the tracker about things not supported right now? Yeah, there, there is a uh, request, as I said before, about Exasol. So okay. please share your thoughts there. It, it can help us. Yeah, perfect. What about Windows function in Postgres SQL? Cannot see it in PHP Storm, but, but it, it works in PG, P, uh, Postgres admin. Application, but as far as I know, they also work in data grid. But if there is a bug with Windows functions, please report it to us. Yep. Okay. Um, I am able to do visualization of data. Uh, am I able to do a visualization of data in data grid? Yeah, there is a possibility here. You can go to context menu and show visualization. Uh, yeah, the question you, is you mean, yeah, 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 I, I got it. Uh, uh, this guy means pie charts, graphs, and or something. No, you cannot do this in data group now. I see. Um, so there is some support like graphs, but there is no uh, data visualization uh, yet. But again, please uh, help us by sharing your uh, ideas and by voting the request. I believe there should be some uh, request about that. I personally would like to see something for that that would help me explain the data. Um, okay. Can we compare query results from different data sources? Um, I believe we, we can do that, and Maxim showed that in the beginning, uh, where you uh, have some results of your query, and you can go to the tool window and then click compare, and then choose another um, to window to compare with. Yeah, but perhaps the question was about different data sources because I showed the difference between results sets from the one data source, but it doesn't matter actually. You, you Here you have data sources and you can compare them. It doesn't matter if they're from different databases, different vendors, different data sources, all the same. So okay. the short answer is yes. Yeah, perfect. 
Um, I think that's it. We've covered all the questions. Uh, great, great. Thank you, Andre. Um, yes, uh, thanks, Maxim and Vasily, for this great presentation. I think uh, we learned a, a bit from it. Uh, I personally uh, certainly did. And thanks, everyone, for your time, for joining this webinar. And yeah, uh, stay tuned for more webinars to come. Thank you, everyone, and please share your feedback. It's really important for us. We need to know if we need to do some more webinars. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, take care. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.